welcome to Fierce Love, where we explore how to help you make your relationships better. And if you, th- darn it, <laughs> that was supposed to be fierce. <coughs> it's okay. <laughs> Here we go again. Welcome to Fierce Love, where we explore how to help you make your relationships more fierce. And if you think Fierce, why that word? Well, stay with us because we are going to be joined, we are are joined by leadership, communications, conversation, and relationship expert, also best-selling author, taken from the pages of her latest book by the same name, Fierce Love, Susan Scott. And Susan, Fierce is... Being real. A fierce conversation is one in which we come out from behind ourselves into our conversations and make them real. And, you know, during training sessions, I'll ask people at the very beginning, if you could put the best possible meaning on the phrase, a fierce conversation, what comes up for you? And they say, passionate, honest, robust, unbridled, untamed, and sometimes a little scary. That can be true. Um, But a fierce, it's about being real. And, you know, There's so much talk about being authentic. And I just think a lot of people, I hate to say this, but I think a lot of people wouldn't know authenticity if it ran over them. I mean, really, they withhold what they're really thinking and feeling so much of the time. I mean, there's no way for me to prove it, but if, if I could, I would be willing to bet that on this planet at this moment, there are millions of people withholding what they really think and feel from someone important to them at work or at home and paying the price for that. So fierce is being real, but there's, you know, there's skill involved there. I mean, some people are very real and we wish they would go away. (laughs) I was just going to say the flip side of that is the folks that are saying, I've got no filter and everything they think of, whatever they think of it, no matter what time, comes right out of their mouth. And so what I love about being real is that there's also skill, as you said, around it. And then there's also nuance and there's learning. And gosh, if there's anything we can do as human beings is to embrace the idea that we can be authentic, be self-accepting, but also be self-improving and enrich the way that we approach being authentic and being real and thinking about our word choice. And we're talking today, let's explore this idea of of flattery and of of saying loving things or kind things or how do we say nice things to our partner our spouse or significant others and we chose this the sent this question which i love which is our sentence let me count the ways i was thinking how do i love thee which mm-hmm. gets out of the let me count the ways because you and i were talking before we started this episode today about who wrote that? Well, of course, it was Elizabeth Barrett Browning, as she wrote to her husband, Robert Browning, back in the 1850s, I think it was. And this poem is really elegant, and it's really maybe over the top for today's conversational styles, but it gives a great insight into what is flattery, and how can it be authentic, and how can it be real, and take it away, Susan. Okay, thank you. And, you know, the very, the first line from the poem is, you know, how do I love thee? Let me count the ways. I love thee to the depth and breadth and height my soul can reach. And I think, okay, that is beautiful. And most of us don't talk like that or write like that. So what would our version be? And, you know, when you think about Valentine's Day, you know, what to give to your partner, do you give flowers and chocolate? Absolutely. But the best gift I ever received from a wonderful man um, was a list of things that he loved about me. And he read them aloud and then he put them on the refrigerator door so that I would be reminded often. And there were 51 things and they were deeply personal and he had Mm. clearly given it a lot of thought, which is why this meant so much. So at the risk of seeming egotistic, I'll share just a few with you because I hope that everybody listening to this will create a list for the one you love um, and yeah. don't wait for Valentine's Day. So my list, Good call. yeah, so my list began in, in no particular order. Uh, you, you care about people, you laugh and smile a lot, 
your face always reveals your mood. You love the outdoors. You go after what it is that you want. You have that tuning fork quality, calming, reassuring. You are loving and respectful of children. You are one out of sight mm -hmm. dancer. Aww. You're up close and personal in my face. And it went on and on and on. And it was just, it was real. And, the, and one of them that meant the most to me said, your tears are an indicator of what is touching you. Wow. Because I do tear up when something touches me, whether it's, you know, I'm watching um, a, a video about animals and how they care for one another and the things that they have, or, or people are, I mean, I am touched by many things and I often tear up. I tear up if I see roadkill. It just- Oh, Susan, yeah. there's so many reasons why we're kindred. I, <laughs> I ah we, we we I don't want to spend I don't want to go down the rabbit hole of, of dead rabbits on the road but oh my gosh I am the same way but back to that list and the idea of conversational or flowery if you're if you, I think there's some very wonderful poetry in in the descriptions that you just read from from that wonderful man when he wrote them and how did that make you feel when you received it from the effort that he took to the words that he chose to his ability to see you for who you are and and write that back to you there's That's so the much thing. that is the thing Gina I felt seen yeah and being seen I felt known yes good and I think I think so often we don't really feel seen um not in a deep sense, not in a way that, that that makes us want to go over and put our arms around someone. And so when we say to someone, thank you, or thanks, babe, that just doesn't cut it, nor does good job, or even I appreciate you. Those are vague. So what's more meaningful is an affirmation that is specific. You, you know, your list might say, I love the way you help fix dinner, talk with my mother, think of fun things to do on weekends, read interesting articles to me, ask for my thoughts about your work situation, really listen to me, come up behind me when I'm at the sink and put your arms around me. That's real. And there, there isn't nearly enough of those statements, those conversations. So how do you get someone who, I love this. I mean, you and I are both passionate about words yeah. and we're both passionate about conversations and we, and we use words a lot with as much purpose as we can. I happen to be in a relationship with a wonderful man I'm grateful to share, but I would say his love language is more action and dependability. And even though he's a journalist and so he can use words, I once asked him to write me a letter in hopes that maybe I would get something like that. I love his handwriting and I tried to give a little nudge. And Susan, a couple of days later, I got a lovely postcard that came in the mail. <laughs> it was about the size of a little, and it said, you know, you're great or something like, I love, really love you or you're, and it was, and I thought, well, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> How do I cultivate? How do we cultivate that? Do we? And I and believe me, I when he went to cover the Olympics in Tokyo last summer, I gave him an envelope for every day that he was going to be gone to open another envelope with a little note. So he got loads of them for me, and so I tried to role model the behavior. Yes, yes, yes. Well, that was the right. I mean, the first thing we have to do we should be doing is to model what it is that we want. And, and we do all have different love languages. I totally get that. Um, I'm, I think that, well, for example, mine is touch. So I love when the man in my life comes up behind me and puts his arms around me when I'm, you know, yeah. counter or something. I love that. And, um, and I'm lucky because that's his love language as well. However, Excellent. if your partner has a different love language, then and, and you really want to hear some more, you want to hear something besides love you and somebody has yeah. you, know, <laughs> you know, then if somebody says love you or you're great, you could say, okay, tell that's wonderful. Tell me one thing that you think is great about me. 
And then, yeah, why not? That's yeah. bold, isn't it? I love that. Why yeah. not? What's one thing? And you don't, you know, you have to be careful about how you say things like this, your tone yeah. of voice. You're, it's not like you're confronting somebody. You're just, oh, I love to hear that. What's one thing that you think is great about me? And they may think, oh no, I'm in trouble now. I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm just yeah, really exactly. saying that. I have to have something concrete. I can't go yeah. from abstract. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So. I think you can draw it out that way and encourage it. Yeah. yeah. And, and if, if somebody says, I love you, you can say, I, I love that you love me. What's one of the things you love about me? That's you know, a great idea. Well yeah. done. Thank you. I, 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 I expected you would have an answer on that. And you did. When we talk about the idea of lists, like what you described or, or my heartfelt lists that I tried to make for my guy how do we make sure that that flattery appears sincere or is heard sincere? what's the difference between sort of buttering somebody up or if yeah. you say the same thing over and over or what are what are we ways that we keep that that sincere i think that frequent undeserved flattery and praise are suspect when mm. we lavish it on our children they may think they're god's gift for simply breathing you know we Flattering woman about her appearance, but little else. And mm. the message can be that she doesn't have anything else of value to contribute. So much of our flattery and praise is insincere, and the recipient knows this, mm. but it's habitual, it's expected, it's a societal norm. So my trust radar kicks in. And I wonder what they're after if they're flattering me in the hope that by inflating my ego, you know, that I'll like them and value them or whatever. I don't respond well to what feels like insincere flattery. I, I, I want to walk away. I mean, the state of my ego, which has its ups and downs, is an insight job. Don't you don't I don't want you to try to mess with it. That, you know, uh, back away. <laughs> so I think. I think I'll never forget, actually, um, when I was first getting into the, the, the role of a facilitator. And the very first time I was going to facilitate a huge conference with, you know, a, a thousand people in the room. And I had been studying and practicing and, and everything. And uh, my mentor, the person who'd been helping me prepare and who I was trying to emulate, Mm -hmm. came up to me right before I was to step out onto the stage and he said I have three words for you and boy I mean I was really paying attention because I was sweating bullets you know and I <laughs> I, I list I looked at him and I listened and he said don't screw up Great, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> actually he didn't say screw up he used the f word and Got I it. just <laughs> started laughing because I know he he got me he totally got me he understood my sense of humor and and I I stepped onto that stage smiling laughing you know feeling seen feeling appreciated it was it was just fantastic it was it was exactly what I needed so the humor humor and that was someone who that's almost like I love that example because that isn't the poetry, that isn't the little notes, it isn't the, the list on the refrigerator, but it's someone who knows you. Yes. And it is using a even a quip or a humorous yes. thing that is still somehow encouraging because it's come from that place of knowing you, seeing you, and caring for you. Yeah. And I've used those same three words with facilitators when we're training them to go into their organizations and teach fierce conversations. At the end of their graduation, I always, you know, I say I have three words for you, <laughs> and I say that quietly to each one of, and each one of them cracks up. I mean, they crack up, and they know that I love them, that I care about them, that I know what it took to, to, to arrive at, at certification. So, well, and, and, yeah, no, go, go ahead. Sorry. Years ago, Ken Blanchard wrote a fabulous little tiny book called *The One Minute Manager*, and it was just a brilliant book um it was like if you if you notice something that's great communicate it in the moment don't wait for a formal performance review or if you notice that something isn't great just one minute of gentle correction and of course that book was immediately followed by 
the 59 second employee, how to stay ahead of your one minute manager, which really cracked Funny. me up. Funny. But, <laughs> but I totally agree with Blanchard. It, feedback isn't positive or negative. It's just feedback and it should include drawing attention to something that someone did well. Um, you know, remember the notion of emotional wake and mm -hmm. how we always leave one like boats that leave a wake from big waves that could call it, cause a small boat nearby to capsize to small yes. ones, get our attention, but cause little, little damage. Our wake is the feeling people have after being in our company. So good job leaves a feeble wake compared to telling someone, you know, I overheard you talking with Ellie about what happened at school and it sounded like you were able to calm her down and help her figure out how to handle it. And I was so impressed by your compassion and how straightforward you were with her, and how you helped her see her part in the incident. That's, that is beautiful. I remember my, my daughter saying to her husband, I don't know how you got to be the ideal father to our girls. But when I watch you interact with them and I see how they respond to you, how they love you so much, how even at, at their ages now, they still want to sit on your lap because they just adore you. I just think, wow, I don't know how you became this wonderful father, but you are, and I love that about you. I mean, that, you know, you could just see him take it in. And that's the thing. When we say good job or thank you or love you, babe, or whatever it is, that doesn't land with us mm -hmm. because we're so I mean, you could potentially say it, but, but what I hear you're saying is that we've got, we talked about flattery, poetry, compliments, but it's all wrapped under this idea of specific feedback that is descriptive, that is in, in the moment, that is vivid back to the words of what is fierce it's it's vivid it's passionate it's real and it's not just generalities you know that's a very good point gina and i i think that societally at least in the u.s we're so used to if we you know we 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 walk into the office we see somebody we say um how are you but usually we add something like wow you look great today or something's like that and we feel like we feel obligated to say something like that and then the person says well you look great too or thank you or whatever i want people to try the experiment the experiment of simply saying hello <laughs> stop full stop and not adding this automatic somewhat insincere unnecessary flattery to it save your praise, save your acknowledgement, save your appreciation for something real, something very specific. Give it some thought. For example, um, sometimes what, what we do at Fierce is we, we gather everybody. Of course, now that we're virtual, that's a little harder to do, but we do it online. Gather everybody into a big circle, a virtual circle. And, uh, and have each person take a turn in what we call the, the warm seat, not the hot seat, the warm seat. Nice. And they have 60 seconds to say, what I bring to the team is, and then they say whatever they're gonna say. And then the team, we go around and each person says, what I feel you bring to the team is, and then they say it, and, the, and it's very thoughtful. It, it has to be unique for that person sitting in that warm seat. And what I have done- in the If you're the last person in that circle, but yes, I, <laughs> it's a challenge. But that's well, great because it, it does be. cause you. Well, but <laughs> I, and I, what I've done in the past is record that. So that, and then hand the person the recording and they go home and they play it for their spouse. They play it for their oh, family, wow. play it for themselves if they're having a bad day. And actually it has brought people to tears. Not only the person receiving the, the very real 
appreciative comments, but the person making them, they get in touch with, wow, I really truly do appreciate this about this person. This person means a lot to me. This person means a lot to our team. We can do that in, the, in our families as well. We can do that with our partners. And so I think, I think you know, we, we need to be able to be, um, I don't know, more thoughtful about showing our appreciation. Don't just slather it on for no specific reason. Wait for a moment when there's something very real that gets your attention that you want to say, wow, you know, maybe you're, maybe you're both been binge watching something on TV and you realize that for you, this is one of those perfect moments. And it, I mean, it just comes over you and you might say something like, for me, this is, this is a perfect moment. I'm cuddled up with a person I love watching a show we both enjoy in our cozy home, safe, at least temporarily, from the demands of the outside world. I, I love us, I love you. That would land, I think. Or maybe your, your, your partner, um, you might say, you are a miracle of, of manhood. <laughs> this is so <laughs> thoughtful what you just did. You know, thank you, thank you, thank you. I lift this glass to you. You know, uh, that's what I what I have said when I come home and, and dinner is is in the process of being uh, prepared and there's a glass of wine for me on the counter. Oh yes! Wow, you know, you are a miracle of manhood. Not just thank you, honey. I mean, thank you, sweetheart. Right. I love you. Right. I mean, be be say a little more. Just a little more than that. I think that's fantastic. And you know, I want to shift gears for just a second because we've been talking about talking yeah. and, also, and also note writing, which is yes. a little bit more longhand. Mm -hmm. And of course today, how do most of us communicate? I mean, you and I text each other on WhatsApp yeah. in between our recordings and things like that. And what is, is there a best practice for text? I know each couple might come up with their own way, but are there some techniques around texting to do the same types of compliments and caring feedback. How would you encourage people to use feed, uh, feedback through texting, maybe more effectively to enrich well, their relationship? Well, if it if it is to uh, if it is to show your appreciation, if it is to praise, to to I don't like the word flatter. I don't know. There's something about that word that yeah, just, it, it feels disingenuous just yeah. because the word become. I agree. Yeah, but if you know, there's something that that you know, we've just had an experience together or we did something or I noticed something, it's fine to put that in a text. But again, just specifically as if we were talking because we kind of are. And once in a while, just pick up the phone for heaven's sakes. I mean, I, I have friends that will send me these long texts or long emails full of questions for me. And I think if I were to respond via email or text. It would take me 45 minutes to do this justice. Then I just call them. I say, let's right. just talk this through. Um, In real time. Not So this is, this is different than what I was also <laughs> thinking of is the ability to do a little voice recording on yep, WhatsApp or on that. Snapchat yes. or whatever and have that yeah. little recording go over. But you're saying, hey, instead of just parking a text <laughs> or parking a little voice message, what about a real-time interactive yeah. conversation yeah. on the phone? Yeah. Ooh, yeah. You are so revelation, revolutionary. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I would say I mean, there, there's a whole chapter on how to, how to show someone your appreciation of them in a way that will truly land with them. And of course, you're modeling what you would love to get back. But also, there's a whole different chapter, which we won't go into now, but on how to give you know, if, if you're not happy about something, what to do. And I, one thing I would say is do not do that via text or email. That really needs to be voice to voice. Um, yes. You know, there's so, in, in business and in personal relationships, there's so much lost yeah. when there's no tonality and there's no color or context around the words that are printed. If it's a text, or if it's an email, I couldn't agree more. And more things are made worse often by someone receiving an email or writing an email in yeah. 
bit of frustration or anger and hitting send before they've had a chance to breathe. And then that just erupts into something that's going to be now, taking longer. I just longer. thought of something else, Gina, that I want to throw in yes. before we get to the end of this conversation. I have a friend named Jose and he was always telling me about his daughter. He was crazy about his daughter. He was proud of his daughter. He was always telling his daughter how wonderful she was, how talented she was, how special she was, how much he loved her and admired her and everything. And um, he, uh, he went, he, 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 his marriage was struggling a little bit. So he went to get some help and um, he was talking about his, his daughter to the therapist and the therapist said, what, you know, what are you, what are you saying to your wife? I mean, all of your comments are about your daughter. Are you saying anything like this to your wife? And he said, mm. well, you know, I want, what I want to do is model for my daughter, the kind of man she should find. She should find a man who really appreciates her, who loves her. And the therapist said, oh, that's not what she's going to be looking for. What she is watching is how you interact with her mother. That yeah. is her model for husband. And Jose said, oh my God, you know, I, I get it. I need to change some things. I need to go to my, to my wife and, and realize that I need to interact with her in front of my daughter. Yes. Uh, and say things to my wife in front of my daughter that she will see because that's what she needs to see. What a powerful thing to understand. I mean, children watch the relationship between their parents as a model for marriage. And if you think back to your childhood, what did your parents model for you? I mean, not all of us had a great model. How did that affect your um, childhood? You know, how did that influence how you react with a partner, you know, if you have children, what are you modeling for them? And I think, I think there's some real food for thought there is what we are living life right in front of our children. And we are showing them what does or does not work in a relationship. Oh, absolutely, Susan. And the, the idea that we can be more purposeful, more fierce about how we give feedback, how we yeah. are seeing our partner, how we are specific, how we are vivid, how we are in the moment and helping them to see that we're role modeling the behavior of compliments, AKA great positive reinforcing the behaviors that we like feedback. Hopefully we'll also encourage them to do the same. You know, and I love the fact that you wrote those notes for the, the lovely man in your life when he was uh, at the Olympics. I do think that actually writing something down in your own handwriting, mine is horrible, but it's legible for most people, writing it down and giving it to somebody or posting it on the refrigerator or whatever it is, that is, that is somehow more lasting than a text or an email because you know, when, when you can feel, when I write, I am, I like to write with pen and ink on paper because there's something about the ink flowing onto the page that works for me rather than. Absolutely. Me. Yeah. Any, any parent will tell you if they get a handmade card from their child in their child's handwriting, yeah. no matter what age, yeah. that is going to go in the keeper drawer and not in the whatever that 86 drawer yeah. <laughs> and and the same thing for our partners and our and the the signature of your your style of writing even if it is a little bit spidery or illegible or, or distinctive it's a part of your personality and i absolutely agree with you it is not a lost art it is an art worth saving it's an art worth treasuring and it is a part of you share more of you is what I'm hearing and be more and you specific know what? To help each other. If you're in the, in, if you're um, any kind of a, a leader in a business, I think to actually gather together a bunch of little cards and occasionally write one of the employees a note 
about something very specific that you appreciate about them and give that to them, that goes, they'll keep it. They'll keep it forever. I mean, and they'll, they'll take it home and show their family. So I just, I, I just, there just isn't enough love <laughs> in this world. There isn't enough communication of love. And I think love should show up everywhere in our lives, at work, at home, everywhere. And, and it shows up in the words that we say to one another, in the expression on our faces, when we say those words, our body language, when we're with someone, how present are we? How real are we being with this person? And you, you know, this is, this is not a huge arduous assignment. This is just something you can do. It, it doesn't even take very long, just in the moment to communicate to someone what, you know, this, thing that you just did or this thing that you just said, here's how I feel about this. And um, oh, I just want there to be so much more uh, in our lives than that because I don't want us to fall asleep during our relationships. I don't want us to just assume that because we said I do and I love you way back when, or, or just because I say, love you, babe, when you're walking out the door, that that is enough. I don't want to assume that because you just never know what's, you know, what lands and what doesn't land with the people in your life. Oh, well done, Susan. I think that is a wonderful place to end this incredible episode. The idea that we have more opportunities, make more opportunities to show love to the people that we work with, the people that, that are in our lives, personal, professional. We don't have separate lives. We just have one life. So yeah. find ways to text, speak right in your own handwriting that are really specific ways to show that you care and that you see them and that they matter so let me count the ways and number one for all of us is to just begin yes and on that note thank you so much once again i'm gina london in dublin with the fantastic susan scott in seattle and this is the fierce love podcast and as you're listening please don't forget to join us over on the facebook community dedicated to all of you wonderful people out there on fierce love the book and the podcast and the community at facebook it's all coming together to help you share your experiences share the feedback experiences that you're having and possibly we'll get a chance to spotlight and have some questions with you and learn directly from your own experiences and add to this conversation of how to be more fierce. Make it a great one. Until next time, thanks again for listening.